Commemoration is about the present. We choose to honor someone with putting up a statue or hanging a street or a school because they embody some value that we honor, that we celebrate. And so many of the street names here don't reflect the values that we hold today. Stonewall and Barringer, Jefferson Davis and others, these individuals promoted hatred and racism and discrimination. And so as I sit here as a council member looking at Charlotte and how progressive it should be, it makes me more determined to ensure that we as a community begin to honor those individuals that reflect our morals and our values as we move forward. Today is about unifying our city. We know that this represents positive change. We know that it represents the willingness to examine who we are and to move forward. And we so wanted to demonstrate that as a city, we were supportive of a lot of the things that were being voiced in the street. I was heartbroken uh, when I saw the, the tape of George Floyd's death. I was heartbroken when I saw <clears throat> the killing of the, the gentleman in Minnesota, or the young man jogging and was run down and killed. The issue in our community and our nation of racism and hatred and discrimination is real. And we were having this discussion about, we need to make changes, right? And the mayor and her wisdom said, well, hold on, let's make sure that we have a process so that we can have community buy-in. We didn't want to create something that people would be against. We wanted to create a momentum for. And in that respect, I was able to appoint the Legacy Commission. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. It's a rather long um, presentation. The commission of individuals who understood Charlotte's history, historians, residents, scholars, identifying streets that bear names that we might want to take a look at. Jefferson Davis Street, named for the president of the Confederate States of America from 1861 to 1865. A lot of changes need to be made throughout Charlotte, period. So I'm glad they're actually starting with the street name changes and stuff like that in these different areas. Pfeiffer Avenue, one of the largest slave owners in the city, he hosted the last meeting of the Confederate cabinet. Cameron A. Morrison was a prominent leader of the Red Shirts that worked to suppress and terrorize black voters in North Carolina in the late 1890s. Acock Lane, he was a primary architect of the state's white supremacy movement. Stonewall Street and Jackson Avenue were named for Thomas Stonewall Jackson, the Confederate General. There's a robust community engagement where we're going out to these various communities, asking them their preference in terms of street names. For me to get involved with this was a great opportunity. When I heard about it, I went and made my own little flyer and went door to door. <laughs> on Jefferson Davis Street to say, hey, they're having a meeting about the change that's going to happen to the city. We'll provide the historical context on Barringer Drive and why that street has been prioritized. And then we'll provide the implementation schedule for your information and for feedback. The recommendations that the Legacy Commission made were informed by the feedback we had received from almost 1,500 residents. Our team of us canvassed door to door to collect ballots, answer questions, or encourage voting. Are you familiar with the possible renaming of Jackson Avenue? Yeah. We allowed everybody to submit three choices and rank their choices. We review the names, I submit them to the committees, and we approve based on what the neighborhood suggests. One or two streets at a time, engage the people who live on those streets, engage the businesses that are located on those streets to help them through that transition period of having your street name change and get a sense of what a new name that people can embrace and be proud of would be. Legacy, it means preserving something that other people can find out about with pride. My community was Good Samaritan. 
Good Samaritan was the oldest hospital for people of color in North Carolina. We had black doctors, surgeons, urologists, pediatricians, and it was an important icon in the Charlotte community. It's just awesome and emotional to look at that sign and remember some of the things that Good Samaritan stood for and did for the community. I feel like it's, it's a, a different outlook, replacing the old history, the bad or whatever, and just kind of bringing like a new light to this area. Today's unveiling represents positive change and a step in the right direction. This is a reminder that we are dedicated to reimagining civic spaces and creating a new symbolic landscape that all Charlotte teens can be proud of. And that's why we will rename the street Druid Hills Way. I like the change. We had the first house up on, at the end of the street, 2401. When we were growing up, teenagers, we would say, why would they name this street Jefferson Davis in a black neighborhood? Initially when it was built, it was built for GIs that were coming home from the war. So it was a primarily white neighborhood. And then as time went on, um, it transitioned and it became a primarily African-American community. And imagine someone who was opposed to your free existence honored up there in the street. So that is the first name that got changed. Are there any neighborhood leaders here? Melissa? Melissa, come on. To make that change, I think it's just indicative of the changes that are happening in the city. But people are not afraid to speak up. They're not afraid to voice their opinion and say, hey, this is wrong, and we know that's how it was done in the past. But things change, and societal views change. As a historian, I look at some of the big mistakes we've made over time, but one that comes immediately to mind is demolition of the Brooklyn neighborhood in urban renewal. And that's one of the great tragedies of Charlotte is the flattening of that neighborhood without listening to the people involved. A lot of historians talk a lot about the place. Brooklyn was more than just a place. Brooklyn was a lifestyle. Brooklyn had a soul. And we absolutely appreciate all of the work that's gone into trying to keep those memories alive. Let me begin by telling you that it's an honor to be here this morning to celebrate this historical occasion and pay tribute to the African-American heroes, the Martha Point Marines. We applaud the city of Charlotte with the purpose of honoring trailblazers who dare to want to be a Marine at a time when African-Americans were excluded from the Marine Corps. It's valuable that our stories are told so that people can learn and understand our past and where we have come from. I think those are the kinds of names and the kinds of individuals we need to celebrate because they reflect the hard work that we need to do now to build a more inclusive city. We're a large metropolitan area. We're the 15th largest city in the country. And that's why I think it's really important for the city of Charlotte to acknowledge its past and try to provide corrective action as we move forward. We are a diverse city, and we want everyone to feel respected. The generations that follow us should look back and say, you did the right things, you laid the foundation for the next step. 